Hello everyone, in this week's episode we want to show how we process our chickens without a scalder or a plucker and using less than a hundred dollars worth of tools and supplies. Now we do want to post this warning, this video does contain graphic uh, footage of us dispatching chickens, butchering them, the whole process. In fact, what we'll be demonstrating is from the dispatching process all the way to the bagging process and all the details of how we do every step. So if you're a little squeamish, you don't like this, uh, you may want to skip this video and maybe go back and watch one of our other videos. Kelly and I, it's, uh, today is processing day and we, uh, we had mentioned that we would document this. Uh, we've got our Red Rangers that we had left over from our first batch. If you remember, we did our Cornish Cross uh, in one Red Ranger to get an idea of how the weights turned out. When we left the rest of the Red Rangers, we knew they were going to be underweight compared to the Cornish Cross, so we wanted to uh, uh, let them go a bit longer. So now it's three weeks later since our processing of the Cornish Cross, and uh, we're ready to, to process these Red Rangers, so we're anxious to see how they come out. Now, the whole point of this, obviously, there's all kinds of processing videos, so uh, you, know, you can YouTube, you can Google, all kinds of different things. What we want to do is just show how we do it without a plucker or a scalder, and we're going to be using the skinning process. But uh, kind of the, the purpose of this is to show you that with a very little amount of equipment, uh, in fact, you really don't need a lot of equipment, you can do this at home, so at a homesteading level, if you're just doing a couple birds for yourself at a time or less than 10, then uh, this this could be the way to go, and you don't have to invest in all that equipment or mess with scalding and plucking. Do you? What do you think about plucking? Uh, by hand, no. Yeah. <laughs> it's not worth it. It took too too long trying yeah. to get all of those little yeah, feathers hand, out of there. Yeah, hand plucking to drag, and especially if you've got a darker colored chicken, like if it's got darker feathers, then all those little pin feathers are tough to get out. And I know a lot of people actually will take um, uh, like a blowtorch and just scald the rest of those pin feathers off. Um, so what tools are we using? Well, obviously the main tool is our knives, and uh, again, everybody has different preferences for, preferences for knives. I usually keep a, a knife that's for dispatching, so this is where I'll actually uh, bleed out the chicken, so I'll use that knife, of course, clean and sharpened. And then we use these fillet knives that uh, I'll use for skinning, and then Kelly will keep hers for eviscerating. And we don't let them cross. You know, we don't, um, I don't go from skinning one to moving over here to eviscerate. We like to keep them, keep them clean and keep them in a certain area. Now, um, like the dispatch knife, I'll keep over by the killing cone. Uh, my skinning knife, I'll keep over there as well because I will actually skin over here on the corner of the, the canopy. Uh, the reason why we have the canopy, of course, is to not only give a shade, but if it would start to rain, we'd have shelter. We had, uh, we actually had a, quite a bit of rain last night. We had a um, remnants of a tropical storm come through West Virginia, so I think we got three inches last night. Uh, so uh, we, we decided we were going to set up here on the driveway instead of being out in the yard like we normally do. But the canopy helps obviously give us shade and shelter, but it also is, you can see here I've got my little, uh, my little strings that I hang from. These are my skinning strings, so uh, just like you'd hang a deer or other large animal uh, you know, from from somewhere to be able to skin it out, we do the same with the chickens. So I just hang them by their feet here and I can skin them out and of course toss the skin into the, uh, into the bucket there. So that's why the canopy's there. It's kind of, um, um, you know, not, not the most uh, uh, elegant looking thing, but it gets the job done and it allows me to work. You can kind of see the height here, it allows me to work right at eye level, so that works well for me. And probably the other, other tool you need is your killing cone. And the reason why we do the killing cone is, is quite simple. That is, uh, from what we've uh, studied and, 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 and researched and people talk about that the killing cone is one of the most humane ways to dispatch a chicken. Uh, when a chicken is upside down and it's kind of being cradled by that cone, it actually makes it uh, somewhat uh, drowsy. And of course, as you, as you dispatch the chicken and that blood drains, it allows the, uh, um, you know, the chicken doesn't get all freaked out, doesn't flip out, not running around like a chicken with its head cut off, you've heard that term. So we have that opportunity to, to humanely dispatch the chicken and it basically just goes to sleep. In fact, if you listen to the guys that, uh, like Salatin and some of the guys that use the killing cone uh, constantly, they talk about that the chicken actually passes out before it dies because of being upside down, the loss of blood. It's like standing up from, in a, standing up from a chair too quickly. So that's what we use. So killing cone is, is a good investment. I'd recommend that. Uh, I made a killing cone. It's, um, it's just made out of flashing. It's a little bit smaller and it's, uh, it has a smaller opening. So a smaller game bird, it would be good for. It's a little bit too small for the chickens that we've raised. 
but a killing cone I think is about $35, so not a, not a huge expense. And then our processing table where, where all the magic happens, where Kelly does evisceration, is, um, is obviously simply a table and we've taken plastic, we've taken brand new plastic, we put it down, Kelly sterilizes it and cleans it. And then I have an old piece of Corian countertop uh, from, from when we had our kitchen install done. And I really like the Corian because obviously it's antimicrobial. You can keep it clean and, and sterilize it and, and get it super clean there. So that, uh, that's a nice piece of, uh, of material for her to do her work on. And of course, it's not going to hold moisture. It's not going to retain any bacteria there. But yet it's nice at hard surface. So if she need to do some, some chopping, then, then she can do that. The cooler is the only other thing too. So you coolers with ice. So as soon as Kelly is done eviscerating um, and she's got final inspection done on the chickens, they go straight into a, an ice bath cooler to cool them down because you want to get that body, uh, you want to get that core temperature of that uh, carcass as low as possible, as quickly as possible. So we'll cool those down and then of course we'll go inside for bagging and we'll document all that as well. And we're just processing these birds. We're not going to be processing processing them into parts. It's just going to be a whole bird. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're not, not breaking these down. Um, if we were going to break them down, then that would be another station that we'd set up where we'd actually do the uh, the breaking down of the carcass, you know, separating the breasts and everything. So uh, seems to be we're going to have some good weather today. Got a nice little breeze. Hopefully that holds up and uh, we'll dive right into this. Well, as we dispatch, again, utilizing the killing cone, um, again, we feel is one of the most humane ways to, uh, to dispatch a bird. So what we like to do is I'll take the chicken by my right hand, by the right hand by the neck, and then grab both of his feet. So I've got him stretched out, get him out of my mic cord there. So I've got his feet stretched out, and I'm just going to stick his head down in that cone, nice and easy. And yeah, he gets, he relaxes as much as a chicken can, obviously being upside down. But I just pull his head out nicely, and I'm going to make this cut right behind this cheekbone, this waddle there. This feather is a little thick, so uh, you want to be <clears throat> deliberate in your cut. We're just going to make that cut right in the jugular area there. So just a nice cut. One more little push there. There we go. And again, we're not we're not removing the head. We want the brain to communicate with the body to say to, to have it still pump out all that blood. So we want a nice drained bird, and the uh, the kicking and the convulsions the chicken's having is obviously as it's going into the process of dying, it, it's just going through some of those natural involuntary convulsions. But you can see that the, you know, the chicken wasn't screaming, didn't put up a fight, didn't do a lot of things. So it was it was one of the most humane ways to dispatch a chicken. Again, we always say on our property that uh, on our farm that animals we raise they have. All their days are good except for one, and this is the one bad day that a chicken has. And obviously when our pig, pigs go to processing, that's one bad day that they have as well. So we want to try to be as humane and, and let a chicken be a chicken until he's ready to serve us with his, uh, his flesh. Okay, so as we wait for that one to, uh, to finalize his uh, dispatching, we're going to move over here and start skinning. Okay, skinning process. So where do we like to start? Again, there's there's no right or wrong answer to this. There's a whole bunch of different ways to skin. The one thing I, I can't stress enough, and um, and uh, I think Joel Salton is who I learned this from, is uh, try not to cut through bone as much as possible. I mean, a chicken, just, just like us, we have joints, bones are connected by cartilage and sinew and those type of things. If you just start hacking and cleaving through bone, you may be able to get through it quicker, but you're going to have all these little shards, these sharp pieces of bone that if you, when you package them up in your freezer bags or when you put them in your shrink bags, there's a chance that that's going to poke a hole in your bag. So, so we don't like to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the head. And so what I'm doing is I'm using my thumb on my, I'm left-handed. So everything goes in my, uh, my left hand when it comes to the business end. So I'm going to pick an arbitrary portion on the neck. Now, again, some people like chicken necks, so they would go right up just below the skull and remove the head. Some people don't want to mess with it, so it doesn't really matter. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my, uh, I'm taking my thumb here, and I'm just kind of feeling on the vertebrae spot there between the uh, uh, vertebral bones, and I'm just going to make a slight cut, try to get that worked in there, and if I can get that right spot, yep, it feels it there.
and just kind of wring that a bit. And there we go. The head's removed cleanly in between the bones. We'll put that in our bucket. So, um, so that's the, the first step. What I like to do next is I like to start the skinning process. And the neat thing about a chicken, obviously doing this while the chicken's warm allows you to remove the flesh much easier, allows to move the skin easier. So what I normally do, if this is the keel bone, obviously this is the, uh, yeah, the, the keel bone of the chicken, this is kind of the underbelly, there's a, a, a strong bone there. So we're, I'm just gonna go on one side of that and I'm gonna pinch the, the flesh up. And I'm gonna take my knife and uh, I'm gonna get it started. Well, the good thing about a chicken, it's kind of neat, they are, uh, their skin isn't really attached in, in all these places. So I just kind of run a little line up there. And uh, it may sound gross, but chicken uh, skinning is more of tearing than it is of cutting. And again, if you watch other videos of chicken, people processing chickens, they'll say the same thing, that you're going to tear more than you're going to cut. So I'm basically just getting a lot of this started with the knife. And then it allows me to just, so I'm going to set the knife down actually. So it allows me to just get in here and just start, start tearing that um, skin away from the, uh, from away from the meat of the bird. So as you come around, we'll do the other side here. So you can see the, the keel bone there is where the that flesh is attached. But as soon as I get my hands in behind it here, So I can zip that off. And what I like to do is I'll just take my knife, and you can see here's the breast, the chicken breast. I'm using the back side of the knife, so I'm not cutting, and I'm going to go in as far as I can and just poke a hole in that skin. Come up this way. That way I can go toward the head one direction and then toward the vent the other direction with the, the skin. So there, I just, just cut that through. And I'll say this uh, Red Ranger, their flesh is much thicker and stronger than the uh, Cornish Cross. This is my first observation there. These guys are a little bit older, so they've had a time to put a little bit more weight. So there's central portion of the of the flesh from the front. Now down to the wing wing area here, and you can see on this side, on this wing, um, it's just kind of like a long sleeve shirt. I've got the uh, the flesh here. So what I do is just simply, yeah, it broke off. I just want to simply pull it and. There. See, that just completely strips out the wing there. Now, again, if I wanted to mess with removing flight feathers, again, you guys may think this is wasteful, and I guess to some degree it is, but these, these will be consumed. They will not be wasted and just end up in the garbage or the compost pile. But I'm going to take my knife and get right behind that joint of that elbow, and I'm going to remove that wing. So again, a lot of it is just feeling around and because uh, you want to keep from sticking your knives in uh, in uh, bone. Let the weight of the bird help you out. So you can see I'm just rolling that back. And there we go. So there's a wing off. You can see that uh, we've got most of that. And as we go through the rinse process, then as Kelly's eviscerating, she cleans that up in final inspection to get all these last little feathers off. And one thing I'll point out, this is the, uh, the crop. So um, as, we, as we documented last night, we took the chickens off of the pasture. We didn't want them to be in the pasture eating up until the time that we were ready to dispatch them. So I moved them over. That's why I moved them over to the driveway. Uh, just moving the tractor over, it's on asphalt. Obviously, there's no grass there. They're not going to eat anything. And that comes in handy when you go to eviscerate, because you've got a crop full of grass, full of feed. When you go to pull the uh, pull the, uh, the all the guts out, all the eviscerate out, then there's a chance that could squeeze out, and you've got you know that on your your table to worry about. And also, 
uh, over the course of 12 hours, these chickens, the food they have eaten has gone through. So uh, the amount of uh, fecal material in the intestines should be very, very minimal. In fact, there's a good chance it'll be completely empty. So again, as Kelly's removing that eviscerate, then she's not squeezing uh, poop out all over the table and you know, just, just a way to keep things cleaner. So uh, let's carry on here. Again, a warm chicken skins out so much easier. So this is why you want to butcher him right after you've dispatched him. So again, just coming right up the, the back of the chicken here, up the, up the thighs. And then just like you're taking down a pair of socks, I just roll them up above that joint and let them hang. And then same here, I usually separate it from the vent. So when I get to the uh, tail, yeah, again, if this was, if I was not skinning this bird, then I would want to uh, just keep the tail intact and just remove the scent gland, or an oil gland, not scent gland, an oil gland that a chicken has, and I would, I would just remove that, and that's the, at the very end of the tail. You know, that's when you see a chicken preening himself. He's reaching back and grabbing that oil and, and using it to spread on his, his wings and, and those type of deals. So what I'm doing is just uh, removing the, uh, the tail completely. And uh, again, since we're not messing with that, that's not something you're gonna eat anyway. Okay, so as you can see, I got these socks pulled up. So I'm just gonna take the rest of the flesh away from the vent. Okay, so now it's time, the final step is time to remove the, uh, move the legs. So again, let the weight of the bird help you. So you can see you got these, the flesh there rolled up like socks. So I'm going to come up here and, and find the joint in the knee and do the same thing. I'm just going to stick my knife in between the joints. And then you can actually, when you disconnect some of those tendons there, you can move the knee laterally, move it to its side. You know, like, uh, unfortunately, you see a lot of guys have sports injuries when their knee goes that direction. And uh, just let my knife kind of slide in between and there you go. So now I've got the chicken hanging by one leg. Same deal here. I'm going to make sure you got that rolled up well enough. Get that out of the way. Let that bird hang. So the weight is going to help me find that joint because it's going to stretch that leg out as much as possible. Make that incision across the tendon. There we go. Just let it ride and you can you can feel it coming loose there if you don't like uh if you don't like butchering you're not going to like doing this process just because of you know the feeling i mean you can feel as you're feeling your way through you can feel the elements as they release and there we go so at this point again this looks a little rough with feathers on it but now we go over to the evisceration table where Kelly uses the hose, cleans the bird up, and removes any elements that need to be removed there, and then we'll get into evisceration. Okay, so the first step for the evisceration process, the evisceration process, is to remove the connective tissue around the neck from the esophagus and the trachea. So you can see Kelly sliding her thumb in there, just kind of separating all that connective tissue from the neck um, neck bone, and uh, there's just you know, just again some some flesh elements there that's holding that. So you want those two loose. And see, show them real quick, Kel, the, um, the crop. See how an empty crop is so much beneficial, or so much more beneficial? If that thing was full, then you could have uh, all kinds of bits of grass and grain squeezing out while she's doing that, and that's obviously not pleasant. So she's gonna turn the chicken, and, and look at the keel bone here. So the keel bone, of course, is the bottom of the chicken, the belly where the ribs are, and hit the, touch the point of the keel. Here. Yeah. So you can see that is the where the bone ends and turns, and then uh, then if you see down below the vent, okay, I'll kind of point. Yeah. So you've got that distance between the vent and the keel. Well, all that uh, there's no bone there. Give it a squeeze if you would, Kel. So you can Here. see there's no bone there. That's just that's just the stomach. That's the same as you know our, my gut. So that's my it would be the stomach area there. So Kelly's going to take an area of that and she's going to pinch it. And she's going to do a horizontal cut. So she's just going to make a small incision enough to get her hand in there. So you can see she's made this opening there, so she's gonna stick her fingers in and she's just gonna tear. So she's gonna spread that apart, kind of pull the keel and the pubic bone away from one another. She's gonna stick her hand in 
And with a scooping motion, she's going to just go up and scoop all the organs, <clears throat> and she's going to pull. She's just scooping and pulling. So again, with her fingers and not using a knife, she's not risking any chance of, of cutting something open, of opening up the intestines. And her game plan is to pull. You can see she's pulling the, uh, the esophagus and the trachea through the cavity of the bird. So she's pulling everything out the back end. So everybody leaves the back door. So she's scooping. Sometimes you can get the lungs in one pass. Sometimes you don't. She did get a lung out there, it looks like. Um, so sometimes, sometimes you go back in and get the lungs. They're kind of close. Kidneys. Yeah, there's two kidneys. Pretty large. Uh, they're very large kidneys. So uh, you can see she's got all that eviscerate pulled out now. And it's, it's completely intact still. You can see there's the intestines, that big uh, muscle looking item there is the gizzard. Uh, and a liver. So now, she, while she holds in her hand, again, we don't want to cut the vent. We don't want to cut uh, the poop chute, if you will, for lack of a better term. So she's going to reach, she's going to feel for the pubic bone. You can see the pubic bone's there on the chicken. And she's going to imagine cutting a U shape. So she's going to cut down. So she's making a vertical cut down below, down against the, the pubic bone. She's actually letting the knife ride uh, on the pubic bone. So she's going to come all the way down. And she's basically going to hit at the, uh, at the pelvic bone there, the tailbone. And she's going to move the eviscerate over and do the same thing. And she's going to keep her knife parallel to the cavity of the chicken. That way she's not poking any intestines. So she's coming down alongside the vent there. So now she's got the left side of the U done. So now holding the eviscerate in that hand still, she's now going to do the cross section. So she's doing a horizontal cut. And you see that vent is completely intact. So the intestines are completely intact from vent to the top of the crop is all there. So that goes in the bucket and the organs, uh, loose organs go in there and then she's just going to go in and she's just going to go in and, and feel out um, the rest of the organs, take the other lung out, take those elements and uh, and then give it a good rinse and clean it all before I put it in the cooler. Yeah and what, what do you do for final inspection Kel? I just make sure that there's not any feathers that have been you know, just from on our hands to make sure it's just completely clean and that there's nothing stuck in any, you know, blood's rinsed off. Everything's just as clean as can be. Okay. And then it goes in the cooler and then we move on to the next one. Yep. Okay, so Kelly's finishing up our last bird here. So we did 12 in uh, just a couple hours, I believe. Yes. Yeah. So just a couple hours, we did uh, 12 birds. So again, with skinning and, and doing that process, it, it takes a little more time. Uh, equipment, of course, is going to be your offset for time. So the more equipment you invest in, the quicker you can do this process. Or obviously more labor. Invite uh, more people over. If you had multiple cones, multiple people skinning, multiple people viscerating, then obviously you could bang through it a lot quicker. One thing is kind of neat, um, just a quick little fix-it element here that, uh, that's handy as far as tools go. If you look at Kelly's apron that she has, mm -hmm. that uh, is a fancy uh, concoction that we came up with. That is actually just a piece of plastic that I cut to the typical shape of an apron. In fact, I think I took her cooking apron and used it as a template. But you can see all I did was take uh, duct tape and tape over for tabs and then punch a hole in the duct tape. And an old old t-shirt is what this is, old t-shirt material, so it's not a hard strap on her neck. But uh, just tie that to the tabs, and of course you've got that, uh, you've got the part that goes around your neck, and then same thing back here. So uh, nice little uh, apron, you can make it uh, very quickly, very inexpensively, and then obviously when you're done you just chuck it in the garbage if you want. And it doesn't, uh, doesn't cost a lot, and obviously keeps you from getting covered in chicken guts. So uh, neat little... Uh, Neat little apron hack there. So we have the chickens in the cooler. So we've got everything butchered, and now we're ready to put them in our shrink bags. So what exactly am I talking about with shrink bags? Well, uh, you can get through these uh, poultry supply stores. You can get these little bags, and they're just a uh, just a simple looking looking bag that obviously reacts to heat. What you want to do is heat up a pot to uh, 180 degrees, and when you put the bag down in there with the chicken in the bag down in there, then of course it's gonna draw it up and shrink it up real nice and tight. Now these are nine by 16. Um, again, I wasn't quite sure what size to start with. With the Cornish cross, we were, we were kind of cramming them down in there. It was a little tight. 
So it was uh, everything we could do to get them in. So I would probably next time go with the 10 by 16 or maybe even the 11 by 16 if they make one. Um, so keep that in mind. I think these Red Rangers are a little bit smaller frame, so they shouldn't be a problem. So you get a bag, and you can either use a zip tie, or you can use the little bulldoze, little hook-looking thingies, uh, little ring plier type deals, and the rings would clip around it. So you're going to put the chicken in, spin it, zip tie it, and then dunk it. And of course, we're going to put it on our scale to see what uh, what we've got. But uh, one thing you have to do, obviously, once you get the chicken in the bag, spin it around, put the zip tie on it, you actually want to poke a tiny little hole in it. Because when you stick this down in the water, then of course that bag's going to shrink and it needs a way for that air to escape. You don't want a big balloon. Uh, so you poke a little tiny hole in it and just remember where the hole is that you poked it. And all that air will escape. And you actually only leave this in the water for about three seconds. And if your hole is underwater, then of course the escaping air will blow, blow bubbles and keep it from, from water from getting back in it. If it happens to be above the water line, which the only reason why we'd have anything above the water line is we don't have a big pot. I have to invest in a larger pot. Uh, so this is the, the pot size that we have. So that's why I keep the ladle here. I can ladle water over top of the, as long as it comes in contact, it'll shrink everything down. So to cover up the hole, then what you do is you, uh, you stick a label on it. Now, we got a generic, um, just a generic label here. So yeah, so you just take, take this uh, label, cover it up the hole there, so it obviously seals it up, so you're not gonna get uh, exposure in your freezer and freezer room. So let's get our first one going here. You see, one chicken in a bag. See the next little pokey there. <laughs> this needs a little stiffened up. I'm just gonna take this and give it a twist. And it's gonna zip tight. Going to poke a hole. Poke a hole right here about the keel bone. Tiny little hole. Go for a swim. This is where again the bigger pot would suffice. So I'm just ladling some of the water over there. Move around a little bit, get it to shrink down. Take him out of there. You can see that's shrink down quite nicely there. There's the there's the hole, just a little bit of an expansion of the hole, and then uh, right there. And then what we like to do is dry the bag off. Stick our label on. To our scale. So that's it. Pretty simple. We'll uh, we'll we'll film a couple more here and. Uh... Well, that's it. We got uh, all of our Red Rangers processed and bagged. We hope you enjoyed this. We hope you found it useful and helpful. And again, we can look at the tools that we use. We had our knives, which I had about $30 worth of knives. Not everyone has knives. So you can say, well, I've got knives. I don't need to buy any. I can cross that one off my list. The killing cone, a $35 purchase there for that specialized item. And again, you can hang that anywhere. I had it on a little uh, uh, little sawhorse type thing I built. You can hang it anywhere. You just hang it off the hook. And then the other uh, supplies was the uh, shrink bags, the zip ties, and the labels. And all that came to $25. So if you look at that, knives $30, killing cone $35, and shrink bags and uh, labels is $25, then we're right at $90. Bucks. Again, you may be able to do all that cheaper if you want to build your own killing cone and, and uh, you've got your own knives. Well, we're going to take this opportunity again just to remind everyone to go to our website, redtoolhouse.com. Be sure to go to the bottom and sign up for our e-newsletter. Again, we're uh, not blowing people up with that, but if you if, uh, just let you know what's going on on the farm. If you're on our email newsletter list, then you're automatically entered into the drawing, our monthly drawing. We give away stuff that we find, that, uh, we find helpful in the homestead, and hopefully you will too. Uh, this month, we're giving away chicken nipples. There's a story behind that. You have to go back a couple episodes to see what that's all about. Um, but also, uh, if, if you like this video, please give us a like. Please subscribe if you like our content. Again, it's just a notification uh, when we have a new video coming out every Friday. That's our game plan. And check us out on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Farm. Take care.